On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we'll take a look at the Central Division offenses and why the Minnesota Wild right now rank near the bottom, but why that could change before opening night. Your Locked on Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Wild. We are your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, and we are your team every day. We thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. And for those that listen via audio, make sure to subscribe on your favorite audio platforms. Today's episode of Locked on Wild. We'll be diving into the Central Division offenses. We'll rank how things look right now. Minnesota Wild are on the low end, at least in these rankings. But we'll tell you why that should hopefully change before the season starts. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And we are just going to take a look at kind of where things stand here over the next few episodes to end the week. Offense, defense, goaltending, special teams. See where everybody ranks in the Central Division. And there have been a few teams that have made some big changes this offseason. There have been many teams that haven't done a ton. And there are some teams in the Central that are just really good offensively as it is. So I'm going to rank them one through eight. And we'll talk about why it may not be necessary to be concerned about where the Wild are at offensively right now. So uh, let's dive in. Now, you look at how things finished out last year from a goals perspective. Colorado led the entire NHL at 3.68 goals per game. Next in the Central was Dallas. They were at 3.59. Third in the Central came via the Nashville Predators, who were all the way down at 3.24 goals per game. Then Winnipeg at fourth, 3.16. Uh, Next up for the Central was the Minnesota Wild at 3.02 goals per game. Then St. Louis at 2.85. And uh, Chicago all the way in dead last at 2.17. Now, Arizona not on this list because they obviously are now the Utah Hockey Club. But I would imagine they were in the bottom half to maybe bottom third of the league from a goals perspective. And so you look at just what we would expect. A lot of the keys to having a really good offense are as follows. Number one, really good high end talent to kind of lead the way. That's a staple for all of these teams that we're going to talk about. Number two, depth, quality depth that can give you scoring on your third and fourth lines and are guys that are capable of uh, contributing more than just, you know, just a change of pace type look when, uh, when looking for offense. And so those are really two of the big factors that we look at when we're trying to stack how these offenses look. And so I'm going to start with the uh, team that in my mind is still, probably a um, in the number one spot just because of how good their uh, top end guys are. I'm going to stay with Colorado at number one because you look at obviously Nathan McKinnon had an incredible season. Miko Rantanen had an incredible year too, but it sounds as though we may be getting Gabriel Landeskog back at some time, some points this season that makes a huge difference that is an opportunity uh in which you can get a little bit of a boost offensively if he's back in the lineup in one of those top six roles casey middlestad who had a uh, good end to the season got re-signed to a uh, long-term deal with colorado you know give him a full season and he is somebody that um has potential to Give you 20, 25 goal upside. Arturi Lekkinen had 16 goals last season. Ross Colton had 17. 
the top six or the bottom six for Colorado gets a little more thin, but that top end is as good as you're going to find. And so there's going to be no issue scoring goals for the Colorado Avalanche again this upcoming season. And, um, you know, depending on what happens with Valeri Nishuskin too, you add him into the mix, all of a sudden you're looking at an offense that is head and shoulders above everybody else in the Central. And so Colorado takes the number one spot for me. The next two are a little more interchangeable, but I'm just giving, um, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt to the Dallas Stars because we have seen this group put more uh, compelling film together over the last couple of seasons. You know, we've seen this group do a a lot of good things. And so I'm going to go with Dallas number two. Now, last season, the Stars only had two players with 30-plus goals, Rupe Hintz and Wyatt Johnston. But you look at the guys that give them 20-goal upside, Jason Robertson. Rupe Hints, Tyler Sagan, Wyatt Johnston, Logan Stankoven will go into a full-time role this upcoming season, and I don't think they're going to miss a beat. I mean, Mason Marchment, you've got Matt Duchesne. Those guys all give you 20-plus goal upside. Um, now, you've got Jamie Benn in there, too. Um, and that's another 20-goal guy. So you've got all these guys. Now, will they get to the 20 goal mark? That's the big question. But you've got just really solid depth for the Dallas Stars. They've got three lines that can really hammer at you from a scoring perspective. And then you look at their fourth line. Evgeny Dadanov, Sam Steele, and Colin Blackwell all had between 8 and 12 goals apiece. So... That's a dangerous offense and uh, one that, you know, the difference between them and Colorado, Colorado obviously has the Nathan McKinnon as the, uh, as the top end of that, uh, that equation. And so even though Joe Pavelski has uh, called it a career, you know, offensively Dallas still has tons of depth to be able to overcome that loss and still not miss a beat. And, you know, you look on defense too. Thomas Harley and Miro Heiskanen, both capable of being double-digit scoring guys. So they can certainly um, add into the mix as well. And we shouldn't dismiss the defensive scoring for Colorado either with Devon Taves and uh, Kale McCarr. Those are both double-digit plus uh, scorers, and Kale McCarr gives you 25-goal upside from his spot. So that I think is another reason to push the avalanche up to the top of the list because McCarr and McKinnon and Rantanen are probably three of the best five players in the division. And they all happen to be on the same team. So Colorado's one Dallas is two. Nashville was a close third for me. But it's because I, we haven't seen all these parts fit together yet. And so it's entirely possible if we do a post, uh, postseason ranking uh, to see kind of how this played out. It's entirely possible that uh, Nashville jumps to at least number two with the moves that they've made. So now their top six, Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, Gustav Nyquist. That was a great top line combination for the Predators last year. You throw in Steven Stamkos. You've got Tommy Novak, who missed some time last year, but still wound up with 18 goals. You had Jonathan Marcheseau into the mix. And that is as good of a top six as you'll find in the Central Division. And you've got guys like Luke Evangelista, Colton Sissons in that bottom six that can give you somewhere around the 10 to 15 goal mark. Nashville has potential to, I think, be the one that moves the highest on this list. And uh, it all just depends on if everything gels quickly and if they're able to uh, to really hit the ground running. I don't see any reason why you know, they were at 3.24 goals per game last season. I don't see any reason why they can't be at 
3.6 this upcoming season uh, if everything really coexists nicely. So I have him at like 2B right now. And then defensively, Brady Shea and Roman Yossi, similar to Colorado, they've got double digits um, goal upside in Shea and uh, 20 plus goal upside in Roman Yossi. So I say 2B for Nashville, but you know they could vault as high as the top spot on this list by the time the season is done. Those are, I think, the the definite top heavy hitters of this uh, central division. Now, obviously, you've got a team in the the Winnipeg Jets who is still expecting to be a postseason contender. So we'll talk about them. We, of course, have the Minnesota Wilds coming up as well. We will uh, take a look at how the rest of the Central Division offenses rank out and uh, where the Wild sit right now. That's all coming up as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen today, make sure you check out Locked on NHL. We're getting some big moves uh, throughout the uh, the NHL here this week. And uh, a new one, which I'm sure will be reacted on heavily tomorrow, is it sounds like Rutger McGroarty is headed to the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, would imagine we'll uh, we'll have quite a bit about that here the rest of today into tomorrow on Locked On NHL. So make sure to tune in for your daily dose of NHL coverage. A couple of other items to get to here before we uh, dive back into the conversation. Reminder on Sunday from 12 to 3 at Zamboni's on 7th, we've got Locked On Wild Live, our meet and greet. You've got the opportunity to meet some of your favorite Locked On Wild contributors. Alexis Pearson will be there. State of Hoppy from the Soda Pod will be there. Alex Micheletti will be there. Zach Zeman will be there. I will be there. And of course, Denny will be there as well. So make sure to stop by Zamboni's on 7th, 12 to 3 on Sunday. We hope to see you there. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, And uh, make sure to swing by and say hi. Getting back to our Central Division offenses conversation here. We move to the Winnipeg Jets, who are, as of right now, number four on my list from an offensive perspective. Now, you look, obviously, a a good top line in Kyle Connor, Mark Shifley, and Gabe Velarde, who had 20-plus goals apiece. Shifley, very underrated center uh, for the Winnipeg Jets. Kyle Connor obviously had uh, a 30-plus goal season himself. And then, you know, to dot out the rest of the top six, Nikolai Ehlers, Vladislav Domestikov, Cole Perfetti. You've got Nino Niederreiter in a third-line role, Adam Lowry, Mason Appleton, um, all the way down to the bottom line with Morgan Barron, David Gustafson, and Alex Iafalo. It's a solid list. It just doesn't have that pop at the top like Colorado, Dallas, and Nashville do. That's, I think, the reason that there's that line separating those teams is that Colorado, Dallas, and Nashville just have definitive, like, unquestioned top-level guys. Winnipeg is a couple of them, but not at the level that the others have. 
And, you know, defensively too, I think this is where we start to see a little bit of the separation because you've got Josh Morrissey who can provide you double digit goals as a defenseman. Beyond that, not a ton in the way of goal scoring for the uh, Jets defensively. Dylan DeMello, Dylan Sandberg, Logan Stanley, uh, Neil Pionk. They're not guys that score a ton. And so I'm creating the, the separating line there. And what do we know about the Winnipeg Jets? They're a team that wins primarily with defense and goaltending. So offense, not necessarily their strong suit. So I'm putting them at four, but the team behind them might be able to make a case for 4B. And that is, of course, the St. Louis Blues. You look at this Blues lineup, Jake Neighbors, Robert Thomas, Jordan Cairo, uh, Dylan Holloway, Pavel Buchnevich, Brandon Saad, all but uh, one of those guys, at least right to this point, has shown the ability to be a 30, 25 to 30 goal scorer. Holloway, with a bigger opportunity, could certainly become that type of a player. And then you've got Braden Shen on your third line, who scored 20 goals last year, Alexei Torpchenko, Alexandre uh, Texier. Matthew Joseph, Roddick Foxa, Kasperi Kapanen round out the bottom six. And so, you know, that um, this St. Louis lineup might have a little bit better overall depth than the Winnipeg Jets do, but I just still feel like they're probably fifth on this list, at least at this point. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to leave them in the number five spot. Now the Utah hockey club is another team that I feel like could make a jump this year. They just have so many young players in that lineup that, you know, could take a big step or could, you know, take a step back and Clayton Keller, uh, Barrett Hayton, Nick Schmaltz, at, at least according to daily face off, is your top line combination right now. You've got Lawson Cruz, Logan Cooley, Dylan Gunther on the second line, which is a very solid second line. And then guys like Matias Michelli, Nick Bugstad um, in the bottom six that can give you upwards of 15 to 20 goals. Alex Kerfoot and Kevin Stenland, double-digit goal scorers themselves. Defensively, not a ton in the way of scoring. Just a lot of guys that uh, that are more uh, focused on the defensive side of the uh, of the ice, and so I don't think. But then again, it could change. I don't think Utah has an, the sort of offense that stacks up um, as St. Louis does. So I'm putting them behind. But if guys like Cooley, Gunther, if they take steps forward, uh, if Josh Doan takes uh takes a leap himself if barrett hayton can stay healthy maybe this is an opportunity where they move up a couple of spots towards five or four but as of right now i just uh i put them in at six which leads you to the minnesota wild at seven right now and as we'll talk about to finish the show there is potential for this to change also, depending on how the lineup plays out, but you've got Kirill Kaprizov, who is one of the better players in the entire division. You've got solid players like Marco Rossi, Jewel Eriksson, Matt Boldy. In your, you've got a solid four out of your top six spots filled. But there are just so many questions on the rest of the lineup and what you get from those guys that it's hard to really. You know, it's hard to really pencil them in to do what Bill Guerin has said needs to happen, which is that everybody just needs to play better. Like, that's a great that's a great thing in theory. But beyond that, Ryan Hartman is really the only player in the rest of the lineup that can consistently give you a 20 goal presence. Marcus Foligno did it once. He's not that type of a player. Um, we don't really know what sort of a scorer Murat who's Nadinov is going to be. I feel like at this point, if he plays a full season, he could be between a 
you know, right around a 15 goal type guy. And I, I got to be honest, your bottom line of Jacob Loco, uh, Freddie Goudreau, and Yakov Trenin, you got maybe one guy there that can get you into double digits. And so it it just it depends on what we see for a lineup. You know the top-level guys are going to get their goals and their points, but is Matt Ciccarello going to get closer to like a 16 to 20 goal guy and take kind of a step back to where he was is Marcus Johansson going to give you much of anything. We, we don't know the answers to these questions right now. And, you know, depending on a few players that maybe find their way into the lineup, that could certainly change their spot. But right now I've got the wild, at least offensively, I've got them seventh on the list. Now you've got guys in, Jonas Brodeen, Brock Faber, Jake Middleton, and when healthy, Jared Spurgeon that are potential double-digit scores defensively, which will help. But it, it just, you're, you're relying on a lot of guys being able to just kind of, hey, I have to play better. Like, you can't really, you can't rely on that until the games get started. So, I'm putting the wild at seven, but I'll talk about why that could change at the end of the show. And then on the Chicago side, Chicago is, I just don't really know what to expect from them because you look right now at their projected top line with Tyler Bertuzzi, Connor Bedard, and Tuvo Turvinen, Taylor Hall, Andreas Anthonisiu, and Philip Kurashev as their top six. Then you've got Nick Felino, Jason Dickinson, and Ilya Mikhaev on the third line, and Lucas Reichel, Ryan Donato, Craig Smith. A lot of wild cards here. Bedard is one I think we can definitely peg for uh, 25 to 30 goals if he stays healthy. So that's not really a question, but are you going to get a, another 20-goal performance from Bertuzzi? Is Taylor Hall going to stay healthy? there just are a lot of questions with their offense and their offense was so bad this past season um, at just over two goals per game. It, it's hard to, until we start to see things really pick up, it's hard to do anything other than put Chicago last. So that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, I guess we'll revisit once the season is done and see where things ended up. But we put Minnesota Wild, uh, we put the Minnesota Wild at seven. That could potentially change depending on how the lineup shakes out. And so we'll talk a little bit about why you could see the Wilds go from anywhere to from seventh to honestly fighting it out with Winnipeg. We'll uh, we'll talk about what could lead the Wild offense to be better. As we finish today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by Indeed. We are driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. Join the more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Plus, listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. One final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. We are your team 
every day. And we remind you, too, the Lockdown Wild sweepstakes continues here up until the start of the season. We're trying to get to 3,000 subs on YouTube, and uh, we're giving away two tickets to see the Minnesota Wild take on the Columbus Blue Jackets on opening night, October 10th. Dean Evison headed back to the XL Energy Center uh, to kick off the season, and uh, we'll be giving away two tickets for you to get a chance to see that game in person as uh, a way to celebrate. Full contest details can be found in the description to this episode, but basically all you have to do is uh, screenshot a photo of uh, proof that you subscribe to Locked on Wild and uh, add your name in the email. We'll get you entered in, and then we will randomly draw a winner when uh, we get into the month of October. Again, full contest details can be found uh, in the episode's description here today. So we have the Minnesota Wild 7th offensively, but that's based off of what we see right now with um, the the daily faceoffs lineup combinations. And just in general, like you look at the guys that are question marks on this roster. I don't really have questions with Kirill, Rossi, Erickson, Eck, or Boldy as far as their production goes. Like as of right now, you know, Kirill gives you 40 goal plus upside. I feel like at bare minimum, if Kirill is injured or has, you know, some struggles or inconsistencies, I feel like he can at minimum get you 40, 45 goals. So I don't worry about Kirill from an offensive perspective at all. We've seen the, the, Level, I think, for Marco Rossi in considering what he was dealing with from a line perspective, um, still able to get 20 goals. I feel like his floor is between 20 and 25, but there's upside for him to be higher than that. Jewel Erickson Eck now has uh, hit the 30 goal per season threshold. And as long as he stays healthy, I feel like that's, you know, 25 goals is probably his floor. Matt Boldy. He has been a 30-goal scorer in the NHL already, so I don't worry about him. I worry about the following players from an offensive perspective. Matt Zuccarello, Marcus Johansson, Marcus Foligno, Freddie Goudreau, Yakov Trenin, Jacob Loco. I worry about all these guys because there just is this continued belief that they can be what happened in 2021 that that version of those players is just kind of the norm, the commonplace, the expectation for what the um, f- for what they can bring from an offensive standpoint. Matt Zuccarello, he, if he has a better season and finds a way to be able to contribute without having to have Kirill stapled to his line, he can be a 20 to 25 goal type player. But if not, then you're looking at a guy who is going to pass up shots and is is likely going to be right around a 10 to an 11 or 12 goal guy. Marcus Johansson, again, we've talked about it ad nauseum every day or know it by heart at this point. Marcus Johansson is not a shooter. I feel like a second line wing spot needs to have somebody that shoots the puck. Like, let's just look. Let's just look at what the rest of the division has in that spot. So you've got Marcus Johansson with 11 goals, 112 shots in that second line wing spot. Colorado, as of right now, they have Arturi Lekkanen in that left wing second line spot with 16 goals, 103 shots. Dallas has Jamie Benn, 21 goals, 164 shots. Nashville has Steven Stamkos with 40 goals and 262 shots last year. Winnipeg has Nikolai Ehlers with 25 goals, 233 shots. The St. Louis Blues, that spot likely goes to Dylan Holloway, but for comparison, I'll use Brandon Saad, 26 goals, 141 shots. Utah, Lawson Cruz, 23 goals, 171 shots. And Taylor Hall coming back for the Chicago Blackhawks is somebody who can put up those sorts of comparable numbers. The only team that really is relying on less than that is the Minnesota Wild. 
And so if you look at areas in which this offense could be better is if somebody can go into that second line spot and give you 20 goal, 160 shot upside, then that can lead to this offense, uh, you know, being able to vault teams like Utah and St. Louis. And if again, if you're able to keep what worked so well last year together, Kirill Erickson, Matt Boldy and get Marco Rossi two good pieces on either side of him and slot guys lower in the lineup. I understand the, um, I understand the want to put Matt Zuccarello lower in the lineup at this stage in his career, but I can promise you that is not something that Bill Guerin is going to do. Matt Zuccarello will be a top six guy unless his play absolutely falls off the face of the earth. Bill Guerin is not going to pull him out of that top six spot. I wish Marcus Johansson would get the drop in the lineup treatment because then all of a sudden you're looking at, you know, you're looking at a top six that is, you know, five out of six or five and a half out of six, depending on how good the player is in that wing spot. And so as of right now, there just are so many questions offensively with the Minnesota Wilds and how they're going to look that have a hard time putting them up against the teams that have established depth, have established premier offensive talent. And this is just another way to kind of circle back to we're in this middle ground between getting these prospects that can really help up to the NHL level and uh, continuing to hope that guys who have done it in the past can continue to do it um, a few years down the road. So we'll do this with defense, special teams, and goaltending here throughout the rest of the week uh, just to kind of get a baseline as to where the Wild are at as we get closer to the season. Uh, that will do it for today's episode. Again, we hope to see you on Sunday at Zamboni's from 12 to 3. Uh, for our live episode and meet and greet should be a fantastic time. We uh, look forward to getting a chance to see you in person and uh, celebrate what uh, Lockdown Wild has turned into here over the last couple of seasons. So 12 to 3 at Zamboni's. Make sure to get entered into the Lockdown Wild sweepstakes as well. Full contest rules can be found in the description of today's episode. Uh, make sure to hit that like button if you have not already. So you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. We have new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.